Okay, so it looks like everybody has managed to log in. We're at 102, so I will start the presentation. So today uh, we are gathered here to talk about uh, Polar Polaris Leap. So can I hear back from you guys right off the bat? Um, who has heard of Polaris Leap before? Yes, yeah. And then I've got a lot of people not, oh, Tammy's coming in. Um, uh, yep, we've got some thumbs up. Okay, so we've heard of Leap. What about, has anybody used Leap regularly for their customer service? Yeah, some of us, yes, okay, okay. Awesome. So um, our purpose here today is to um, talk about how great Leap is for frontline service and also for a lot of just in general customer service tasks. Um, in my mind, um, when it comes to serving our customers um, or our patrons, uh, Leap is, is almost always the adequate tool for the job. Um, and, you know, I would be very interested in uh, being challenged uh, on that idea um, in case, you know, if anybody thinks that uh, General Polaris is better. I find Leap to be a friendly interface and pretty intuitive to use. So today we're going to go through and um, we are going to kind of do a walkthrough of how you use Leap most commonly. And then hopefully by the end of this session, you will feel confident enough to play around with it and, uh, and give it a go using it at your own locations. So Joanne is here with me today and she is going to be helping to moderate any questions that come up um, in case uh, anybody is asking questions and I don't notice it popping up in the chat. Okay, so I want to share screen two, share. Okay, can everybody see my presentation now? Should just say Polaris Leap in my name. Awesome, then things are going well. Okay, so I am also going to give Joanne responsibility for becoming co-host in case anybody joins late. All right, let's get started. So uh, today we are talking about Polaris Leap and I will of course make my slides available after this uh, presentation. And then um, if you have any follow-up questions or if we need to you know, go away and solve some problems as was the case at our last webinar and will likely be at the case, the case at our next webinar, um, I will happily follow up with everybody that's attending today so that we can come out of this with as much learning as possible. So uh, this is me, my name is Jesse. I'm member library services manager, um, solver of problems and uh, prolonged conversation participant on books, library challenges, animals, etc. And if you want to get a hold of me, my email is jmorris at nlls.ab.ca. So today we are going to do an overview about what you can do with Leap. Um, we're going to go through the process of logging in um, because your login may be different with, um, the process is just slightly different from Polaris to Leap, um, but your password and your, your login content should be the same. Uh, we're going to go through the process of uh, adding new patrons. We're going to look at how we can manage patron accounts from within the account management screen. We're going to look at running pick lists, which is really handy. If you run pick lists through Leap, you can you don't have to print them off. You can simply uh, load them onto your iPad, which you can use Pol uh, Polaris on, and then you can just go among in your stacks and you can collect your books. So it's uh, environmentally friendly too. We are going to look at searching. We're going to look at check-in, check-out, and we're going to place holds and work within item records. So that's our whole goal for today. So what is Leap? Leap is the online version of Polaris. So I could technically use Leap from home. I can use Leap from the community. I can use Leap from any place where I have an internet connection. So if you are, for instance, doing outreach at a uh, farmer's market or school or a parent's night or any kind of place, really just any place, 
um, you can have access to LEAP. So you can sign people up for memberships, which is, um, I think much nicer than having to uh, have them fill out a paper form and then you truck the paper forms back to the library and then you load it into the computer and then you think to yourself, uh oh, how am I supposed to handle these paper forms that have been handed to me um, based on FOIP and record maintenance uh, laws, right? So it's way better to just put it directly into Polaris via LEAP. Uh, so there's my little pitch for using it while on the go. Um, there's no software to install. You simply go to the web browser, uh, you type in the address, you save it as a bookmark, and you're good to go frequently, constantly, every single time. Um, you can access it via any web browser. They all work. Um, and you can use it on a variety of different uh, um, tools. You can use it on your desktop, your laptop, your iPad, or any generic tablet. So there's, again, my whole pitch. It's very versatile. Uh, so you can use uh, Leap for an enormous range of tasks. You can use it to fulfill your pick list. You can use it to register patrons. You can use it to check in returned items. And you can use it to check out and renew items. You can take fine payments. Um, you can waive fines. Uh, you can view and make holds. You can view uh, your patron's reading history if that function has been activated. You all can also go in and reprint receipts, um, or you can print fines and fees from accounts. Um, you can also create associations and notes. So, um, for instance, if uh, you know Uncle Jim uh, isn't getting around uh, as well as he used to, and Aunt Bev wants to be able to uh, pick up his holds for him, you can create an association uh, between those two accounts so that they connect with each other and one card will do it all, which is pretty great. Um, and that also, it, it means that you don't need to um, ask a whole bunch of questions every time. So it's very handy that way. All right, so what does it look like to log into Polaris Leap? Uh, so you go to leap.trackpack.ab.ca, and I can slow down here if you want to come along with me. Um, and uh, that will take you to the that'll take you to the login page, uh, and then you need to put in your domain and your username. So that should be your donate your domain, which should be nlls backslash backslash, or if you've had the domain change on your computer, then it should just be NL backslash. And then it should be your library code and your first initial and last name. So I've used uh, Lisa's login with her permission um, uh, in order to demonstrate what this looks like. It's a bit of a mouthful, but you can train your computer to remember this for you. So I'll give you guys a moment to log in. And if anybody's having any troubles, we can uh, work through that together. If you are having troubles, please feel free to pop your camera on. You can put your camera on anyways. I don't mind seeing your faces. Um, and uh, I'm happy to uh, talk through uh, whatever is popping up for you. This should work like clockwork, but um, your login is a bit different from mine. Mine is just NL backslash and then my first initial and last name. And I am quite sure that you, you need to have your library code in front of it. Has anybody managed to successfully log on? Okay. Hey, Jesse. Hi. Uh, mine's saying forbidden page requested requires authorization. Is that for the, like, just to get to Leap? Yep. So I'm in the browser and I typed in leap.trackpack.ab.ca. Okay. And that's the feedback that I'm getting. Okay, let me see if there's anything that is different about this information from what I 
I'm going to try again while you're doing that. Okay. Leap, staff. I'm going to log myself out and then I'm going to copy the login from. Same here. That you're getting the same thing. Okay. Let's try this. I'm going to put the full, um, the full uh, web address into the chat. Give that a try and see if that'll take you wh where it should go. Melanie got in. Yeah. That got you to the right place? Yeah, it's Betty Lou. Yeah. Okay, okay. So maybe we just need to be fussy and put in the entire uh, web, web address. It's funny because when I, um, the last time I searched this, I forgot that I had it connected. Oh no, I was using Rhonda's computer and I just typed in track leap login and it gave me that uh, that code. So it's funny that it wouldn't always work. If it's you're changing. logging in from a computer that's connected to the domain, you don't have to put the leap web app external. If you're logging oh. in from something that's not, so if you're at home, this is your external login. Oh, and you're okay. Thanks, Tim. That clarification helps. Okay, so it looks like people are managing to get to the website. Are you? Has anybody successfully logged in, or is anybody having trouble logging in? You might have to try the um, the login both ways, but it should your password should be the same. And you know your login should be the same. So whatever you use for Polaris should work. We have a number of people who were able to get in, and yeah. um, for those of you who aren't, we can talk about it after if you don't mind watching and learning right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and we'll figure it out. It seems like we're having some success, so that's good. Let's continue. All right. So um, once we've logged in, uh, you select your workstation. Big hint, it doesn't matter which one you choose. So just pick one, doesn't matter. OK, so like I said, this is the home page uh, you should be looking at. And this is where the magic happens. So from this screen, uh, you can create a new patron. You can search and scan. You can use the utilities button uh, drop down to run your pick lists and do a whole bunch of other things that we're going to talk about. You can click on the blue box in the top uh, right corner and you can check in items uh, uh, and you can log out in the top corner. And if you're trying to do something that you can't quite figure out, you can use the help button and it has a pretty robust um, troubleshooting uh, database that you can you can search within. So good things happen in the. Okay, so uh, we are going to start with registering a new patron. This is, you know, the thing that we're always trying to do. We want to get people to use the library. So when you are registering a patron, you scan in the new barcode. You uh, select which field they are, or not which field. You select which library location they are registering at. So if you're Bonnieville, it's Bonnieville. If you're Two Hills, it's Two Hills. Uh, you select your patron code. Uh, so most of the time that's going to be standard. Um, there are a few different patron codes that you can select, um, but the majority of the time standard is what you're choosing. Uh, the date of registration should auto-populate and so should the expiration date. Uh, and then after that, you enter in uh, all of the personal information from profile, all the way down to password. And um, usually you can just like turn the keyboard to the patron and they can type in their own password um, or you can just set it to zeros and they can change it when they get home. So uh, you enter in all of your information here, make sure you click save and voila. Your next step is to give your big library spiel. I'm sure everybody has their own uh, elevator talk about uh, all the great things that they can access through the library. Uh, and that's not the focus of this conversation, but if anybody ever wants to compare elevator speeches about the library, I would love to do so. Okay, so that is registering a patron. Uh, you guys have, have a chance to look at that on your own screens. Does anybody have any questions about um, what you're seeing uh, on this screen at all?
Okay, I'm getting silence. Silence is assent. We will move forward. I just had a really quick question. Oh, sure. Um, so say if you're you're registering your patron and mm -hmm. um, they're 18 and over, so mm -hmm. are you creating, are you adding the children under the patron, the adult that's 18 and over, like the parent? That is actually something very cool that I can show you guys. So um, if you are, so in this scenario, are you creating the adult's card or are you creating their children's cards or both? Um, probably, I, well, you showed us the, the how to register the patron. So I guess underneath them, I don't know if you put it underneath them on their card or you just create their own. So um, only one person can use a library card. A library card can only be assigned to one person at a time. Um, so what you can do is you take the card that you've already created and then you can select copy. And then you can copy it to a new card. You enter in a new card number, and then you delete the um, the name information and you put in the child's information. So it it kind of it minimizes the duplication of your work. And then under um, I believe it is uh, attributes, there would be a guardian field, and you would put the the parent's name there, so that um, if the parent ever comes in and doesn't have their child's card with them their name is um, right on that registration and they'd be able to um, uh, do what needs to be done on that card. So technically, um, you know, if, so it say it's the mom's name on the card, the dad would not be able to come in and manipulate the card. And that is specifically, you know, for FOIP reasons, um, because you never know, um, it, you know, you never know what people's home situations are like. So um, whichever parent is on the card or is associated with that card, that is the one that can touch the card. Anybody that isn't on the card or, um, or with an association on the account, they can't, they can't do it. It's absolutely against uh, FOIP regulations. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay. So the one thing that is so important when you are going in and managing people's accounts, because in account management, you can do so many things, but the most important thing that you have to remember is that when you're done, you need to click close because if you don't, and if you just, oops, if you just, um, if you just leave the screen open and eventually log out of Polaris, that will create a block. So if you look at the screen here and you see the little red key by my name, I blocked my own account because I just closed the window without closing my uh, account. And so I'm going to have to go in and undo that block. That is not something that you guys can do in your libraries. It's something that has to be done at head office. So, don't do that because it's going to be frozen until we can get around to fixing it, which of course we will do as fast as we can. But if it gets stuck, you know, at two o'clock in the afternoon and we don't see the ticket until four, um, you know, you, you might not be able to help the customer with what they want. So just please try to always remember to close uh, the, the account page before you navigate away. Um, okay, so uh, looking at the um, a patron uh, a patron account, uh, you can do a whole bunch of things from this screen. You can view the all the of the items that they have checked out. Uh, you can um, look at what is owed on their account. So that account um, tab, uh, what it's indicating is like what is owed. Um, so I owe nothing right now. I've never lost a book, and I don't return things late. Uh, any claims returns or lost items. A claims return um, is where a patron says, I returned that uh, and it didn't get checked in. Sometimes they lost it, but they're sure they didn't. Sometimes the item comes back to the library and um, there's an error when uh, items are being checked in, but the person who's checking in items is moving so fast that they don't notice that it happens. Um, and so they just click through the screen and move on to the next item. And so the item has gotten placed on the, the shelf again, but it's not showing as returned in the system, which leads to um, an, an inaccurate lost um, report. Uh, so when somebody comes in and claims that they have returned something, you just go and quickly check the shelf. And um, either way, uh, so if, if you don't find it, you just mark it as claims 
claims returned. And, uh, and if you do find it, then hooray, you check it in and you uh, eliminate the late, fi late fees. Um, I, I know that many of us already know how to do this, but um, we also have some noobs uh, in, in, in the audience. Uh, and I wanna make sure that I'm kind of representing as much information as I can. Um, so uh, you can view people's holds. You can also place holds from the item uh, or the customer uh, account page. You can um, look at any ILL items that they have held. Uh, you can look at their reading history. Uh, you can look at and create associations. So I mentioned associations before where you can connect one person's account with another person's account so that they can, um, they can work with each other's accounts. Uh, they can pick up each other's holds. They can place holds um, on each other's accounts. Um, in order to kind of facilitate their lifestyle. Maybe one person wants to pick everything up for the family on the way home from work. Maybe somebody's not getting out of the house. There's lots of reasons. There doesn't need to be a reason. It could just be like, well, I want to, we want to, both people have to agree to it. Um, so that's another thing, FOIP, always FOIP. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna say man, a man can't come in and say, hey, I would like to link my library account to my wife's library account. And that doesn't, that can't happen. <laughs> you would need the wife to be there as well. Um, yay FOIP, uh, protecting people's privacy all the time. Okay, um, so let's see. You can also view and create blocks, notes, um, and you can create patron record sense. Um, you know, if you were going to go through and eliminate a whole bunch of records for patrons who were expired, you could put all the patrons on a record set and do that from this screen as well. So that's that. Okay. Um, so now we're going to talk about the pick list. Uh, so this is something that I don't do. Um, I have never uh, had this job, but I know that you can do it from Leap. So um, people who have done this, uh, if I'm missing important information, please uh, feel free to chime in. Uh, I am always happy to be wrong and always happy to have my own knowledge of things improved by your expertise. So please do. Um, but basically, uh, from the home screen, you go to the utilities tab in the top right hand side of the screen and you click it open and you go to um, the pick list processing or request manager. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's request manager. Who can correct me? I'm pretty sure it's request manager. Yeah. We use yeah, pick list I processing. Okay, do we know what the difference is? I'm asking because I don't know. I don't. All right. Well, request manager I'm familiar with because it's on the regular version of Polaris, but we always use pick list processing. Okay. Because it has a checklist. Oh, function. this is good. So it seems like both of those things will get you to the same, to the same end goal. Kat, what do you use when you're using this, oh, you said that you use it on the iPad and doesn't connect. Um, I use it for outreach. So when I was able to go to the lodge, then I would just use it for check-ins and checkouts and uh, renewals and stuff. Um, okay. So just basic uh, patron service, um, never pick lists. Okay, fair enough. All right, so I believe that either of those things will get you to your desired end of having a list of items that are on hold that you need to pick and process for um, the holds in the system. Uh, so that's very handy. There's also a ton of either things that you can do from the utilities screen. Um, you can view uh, your holds queue, so items that are on hold for your library. Um, you can uh, check in things, you can print notices. So if you have items that are overdue and you're in the habit of printing them and sending them to people in the mail, you can do that from this screen. Um, I personally hate the use of paper, but everybody has to do things their own way. And I respect that. Um, but this is where you can get those lists. Um, you can access some cataloging and processing things. You can create unlinked bibliographic record sets, unlinked authority record sets, or mark imports. It is possible that you might not see all of these things because my account is a little bit different from everybody else's accounts. Um, but the, the majority of things that you're going to need to do on a regular basis um, for the care and upkeep of your library, you're going to be able to do in Leap, which is really great. 
Okay, so moving on to scanning and searching in Leap. So you can do the basic search in the scan or search bar at the top left side of the screen. Um, this is where you could search for a patron. This is also where you can search for an item and uh, it will give you some information as you're searching um, to kind of indicate whether you're on the right track. So as I type in my own customer number, it's going to tell me like, going to say basically there's as I type in more numbers it's going to say like oh there's like 5,000 hits um, but as I get to the end of my number it'll be like one um, it'll also give you the option of searching for a patron name versus um, like a title of a book so if I search uh, Jessica J Morris that is my full name no one needs to call me Jessica um, but if I search for my own name it will say like do you want to search that as a keyword or do you want to search that as a, a patron? Um, and so, you know, that way, you know, uh, if you have a patron named, what is a very common name? Let's see, Susan Mallory. It'll, it'll clarify, are you looking for the author Susan Mallory or are you looking for the patron Susan Mallory? So uh, that makes your life pretty easy. But uh, that's his general search and that can turn up a crap ton of um, results. So if you want to do a more specific search, you can use the find tool. So uh, the find tool is much more specific um, and it will help you to narrow your search a lot faster. So you click the find tool, which um, is beside your, your, the original search bar. And it's gonna give you a pop-up that shows um, all of these clickable fields that you can um, change to, you know, you can change search by patron to authority record or bibliographic record or hold request. And you can search for pretty, pretty specific things in this field. Um, and then if you're still turning up a lot of results, you can use the filter on the right-hand side of the search bar to narrow your search further. Once you, have, um, once you have a list here, if you need to, you can add them to a record set. So if, um, if your library was all of a sudden gonna ban Harry Potter, <laughs> you could just search Harry Potter and then you could add them to a record set <laughs> and you'd be like, I need to withdraw these. I hope that you wouldn't have to do that, but it, you know, there, there are situations where you, might, um, where you might suddenly need to withdraw all of one thing. Maybe it came out and then it was determined that an entire printing had a, um, uh, a major selection of pages out of, out of order or something like that. There might be big reasons why you might need to create um, an item record set uh, from this field. So this is how you do it. All right, uh, any questions so far? No, no, seems like everybody's okay. All right, um, so our next, uh, our next mission is checking out an item. So uh, the way that this works is, you know, uh, patron comes to the desk, you scan their library card, and it'll pop up their own page. So this is mine. Um, and then you simply scan the item. Oops, that does that. I click on my screen because I, it, you know, it means something to me, but it, you're not probably not really seeing it. So you click on the item barcode uh, field, and then you scan in all of the items and uh, pay attention to any pop-ups that might show, um, you know, either like a, a damage block where it's like, hey, this has curved pages or, hey, this item is actually on hold for someone else or whatever, pay attention to any, any pop-ups that come up. But anyways, this is basically how you fill up your, um, the, this is how you check out items. And then when you're done, uh, you click on the box that says, uh, complete, and it will give you the option to print a hold receipt. So before, if this is your first time using Leap, you might need to change the printer that your, uh, that your receipt is going to go to. It's probably going to automatically want to go to whatever um, full-size printer you've been using, 
what you need to do is you need to uh, switch the printer to the star printer or the HP printer, Melanie, um, and, and select that. And then still, before you print, you need to make sure that uh, your paper size is set to 72 by 200 with a default margin. Um, the reason that it's important to select that specific paper size is because if you leave it, um, if you leave it to what is it's, it'll probably default set to, you may end up with like three feet of receipt tape printed out in addition to your, uh, your, what you actually need. Um, Rhonda and I played around with this yesterday and learned that, uh, these uh, receipts uh, settings, these printer settings are very important. Uh, the giant panic to grab the printer and flip it over and turn it off before it printed out an entire roll of film sparked a very special kind of terror inside of me. So I highly recommend uh, just, just going in and, and setting that right off the bat. I, you should only need to do that one time. And then every time you um, are using your, you know, your customer service um, computer for, for checkouts and that kind of thing. It should always do the same thing. And then in theory, you would only need to, um, change the printer settings to a regular printer if you were printing notices or other things for your patrons. Um, so it's possible that the majority of the time you may have it set to the receipt printer, depending on, you know, the, the workflow in your library. Leah. So if you have two staff using the same computer and one is loving um, Leap and the other just loves the other Polaris, um, like the more traditional one, do they have to constantly flick back and forth with that printer or is it going to remember from, from Leap? Um, it will remember from Leap. And the nice thing is that you could actually technically have um, one of them logged in on Polaris and the other one logged in on Leap at the same time because one is on your desktop and one is in your browser. Right. So ultimately um, what's going on in Leap is a browser setting. Um, and what's going on uh, in Polaris is a desktop printing setting. So okay. they shouldn't necessarily connect with each other. Tim, if that sounds wrong to you, please feel free to chime in. But this is, this is how I understand things to work. But either way, it's always a good idea to just glance at which printer you're printing to anytime you're starting a new print job, because it is so crappy to try to print out your notices and have them start popping out on your receipt printer. It's not good. Tim's not saying anything, so he's either asleep or I've done it right. Yes. Um, no sleeping in my webinars, please. Uh, okay. So if that all makes sense, I will continue. Um, if we have time at the end, which we might, um, I would be happy to go through and demonstrate any of the things that you guys would like me to demonstrate or, um, or you guys can play around and throw up questions or, or rather toss up questions um, and I will be happy to answer them or write them down and follow up. So continuing. So uh, the next uh, subject matter is checking in materials. You'll find this button in the close to the top left side of your screen. So this is when your customers are returning items to you and you need to uh, register with the computer that or with the ILS that everything has been returned. Um, so you'll scan them in one at a time using uh, under the check-in field. So uh, be, as I mentioned before, be aware of any pop-ups that uh, come through because they may be telling you that a check-in did not work. Uh, and if that happens, then you need to try it again. Sometimes it's just a simple computer malfunction um, or it didn't quite catch the whole barcode or whatever. Um, just being slowing down a tiny bit and reading the notices that pop up will um, help you to uh, you know, avoid grief later by having uh, lost items. Something that you can do uh, when you're in the checkout uh, phase is in, I'm going to pop over to the side of the screen, uh, under your own name, you can look at um, settings and printer, uh, uh, yeah, printing options. 
and you can change um, you can change uh, when things will print up uh, under your printer. Um, so when you're checking things in, um, you can set it so that you get a return slip for every single item. I don't know why you'd want that, but sometimes somebody will want a checkout receipt or a check in receipt when they return their items. So you can do that. Um, most of the time, uh, you don't need to print anything out other than hold slips. So if Kat is checking in items uh, on Leap and somebody from Two Hills has requested uh, that, that item be sent to them, uh, instead of just checking in and being set aside, a, pop, a receipt will pop up on your printer saying like, hey, this item has to go to Two Hills. And then you tuck it in your book and you put it in the right bin. So it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, that should be your default settings, um, but you can go in and change them if you want. And you can play around and see what makes you feel like you're getting the right amount of information in the right form. Um, so it's very, very simple to check things in. You just need to make sure that you're in your check-in screen and then you know, uh, you just keep swiping them in and then you put them away, very easy. Um, alternatively, you can check things in from within the item record. Um, so uh, if I was to scan a book, not in the check-in screen, but just in general and look at the item record, um, I could select check-in from the drop-down menu. Um, but that's, that's a little bit uncommon. You would probably only do that if you were maybe doing library cleanup and just, um, but still, you would still probably just flip over to your check-in screen and do that. Um, if, uh, if you were maybe working with a coworker and um, she wanted you to just mark an item as checked in, you could do that from her account. Um, but I, I mean, again, most of the time you're just checking things in as they come in. So just saying it's possible. Um, and then you can also uh, place holds from within an items, uh, an items uh, page, which is pretty handy. Um, so uh, let's see. So, oh, the next, the next sub subject is uh, placing a hold. Most of the time, what you'll do is you will go into your customer's profile and then you will place new holds from the button kind of in the middle of the screen that says new hold. Um, so that opens up a field that allows you to search and then uh, you click on the copy of the item that you want and uh, you place the hold. Um, so this is what that looks like. Um, so you can start with the item record uh, or you can search from the customer screen. And then once you have decided which item you want, you can, I, so here's me looking for my current uh, PD reading, Just Work. Um, so I could be like, hey, Cold Lake has that. They're near me. This seems like it'll get to me fast. I want that one. So I will uh, click on that. I'll place the hold. And then um, it's as simple as that. The hold is placed. Uh, it'll show up in your holds record. Um, on your on your account and voila. Um, but if you are searching by bibliographic record, what you do is um, you go to actions and you click that you want to place a hold. And then it'll take you to the screen where you put in your customer's information. So you can search from customer screen outward or you can search from item screen inward and both work. Does that make sense? Yes? <laughs> uh, it's good to know that the people I work with are big dorks like me. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that is very simple to do. Um, and there is, and there's, you can see above place hold, which I've highlighted. You can also see where it allow you to check in an item. Um, I guess you might do this if you were, maybe if you found a book that was, had, was on the shelf and um, you didn't want to lug it all the way back, you could just look up the item and mark it as checked in. Haha, -ha, there's a use for that. Um, so Annabelle came into the library and she was like, hey, there's a charge on my account for this. I know that I returned it. Uh, you, go to the, you go to the stacks and you find it, but you don't want to move it again. So you just go back to the computer, you look up the item, you mark it as checked in. Haha, -ha, that is an example of why you'd use that. Success. Okay. 
I like being weird and then I remember that I'm being recorded. Anyway, so uh, renewing things or checking them in. Um, very, very simple. You can do this from your customer's, uh, your customer's account page. Um, I currently have these large print items checked out to me um, in order to demonstrate how to do this, but it's very simple. So you just click on the box beside the item and then you go to actions and you select check in or renew and it will do either of those things for you. It's very easy. It will give you a pop up if there is a hold and it'll ask you if you want to um, ignore that poor patron that also wants this item and renew the hold anyways. Uh, or renew the item anyways, or if you don't want to, in which case you can click cancel. Um, so that is there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. It's very, very simple. And then the last thing that was on our list is just showing you how to get out of this place um, in case you, uh, so some libraries will have uh, one person pretty much sort of like logged in all the time and lots of people will hop on not advised um but uh if you do switch between users throughout the day you just go to log out it's uh underneath your username log out that's all and uh settings is where you would go in order to change your printer settings um i'll show you what that looks like we have a little bit of time left i'll show you what it looks like so I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Uh, we are at the end of this presentation. Um, there's still some time for questions. So I'm going to open it up for that. Does anyone have any questions so far? So Kat brought up that her scanners, scanners don't work for her. On iPad, right? Yeah. Okay. So I've had, um, honestly, there's like three scanners in my desk drawer because the the programmer that I took over for had this same problem all the time. And they're like, oh, well, it must be the scanner. Um, so I have an iPad. And mm -hmm. when I could go to the lodge, I would take the take the iPad and then do the um, checkouts there on site. Mm -hmm. And so the scanner I had was, it's um, Bluetooth capable. Mm -hmm. But it always constantly was like broken barcodes, broken barcodes. And I was like, in fact, these barcodes are not broken. <laughs> um, and because it just wouldn't scan the whole thing, like I'd, you know, really slow and like, and it would never scan the whole barcode. And then I had a great idea of, I bought a dongle for the iPad because the scanner cord has a USB on the other end of it. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'll use the dongle. Um, but it still doesn't do it well and it constantly won't scan an entire barcode um it'll be great it'll scan like three in a row and then there'll be like six that it's like no I'm not doing it so that's that's my barcode scanner problem and it's like i've only ever tried it like i've only ever used leap on the ipad okay yeah. um i'll look into that whether there are any other um more uh you know, permanent and lasting solutions yes. that work reliably. And it, like, maybe it's just this particular brand of scanner or maybe it's, I don't know. The we can look into that. Bluetooth or what? Um, that that seems like something that we should be able to solve. And if, if it's not solvable, then I guess the other solution is potentially bringing like a Chromebook on, on a outreach instead, but let's see if we can make the iPads work. I seem to recall that a few years ago, we maybe sent out iPads everywhere uh, for, for these purposes. So let's see if we can make them more useful. That's probably the one that I use. <laughs> Oof. I, mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Aw, um, so I'll, I'll look into this. Um, I might, I might have to come visit to do that, um, which is fine right. because, you know, I feel yeah, aw. Um, <laughs> Uh, sure. And maybe we'll have to play around. Tim might have to come. It sounds Our like green coffee. We can bring that I said our Bluetooth was uh, very unreliable. And when we were doing our big inventory, we just wanted to run over it in the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, no. It, um, yeah. 
that's right. that's why I tried the the corded like got the dongle mm -hmm. that I could plug the scanner directly mm -hmm. into the iPad, but it's still. It still yeah, like it just we tried a few different things too, and just nothing made it happy. Yeah, I've used I've used a number of dongles for a number of purposes over the years. And my lasting impression of dongles is that they're they're pretty good if you never have to move them. Right. But the, the second something is getting moved around a little bit, the connection is also moving around a little bit and it, it doesn't do what it's intended to do as well. This is my personal reflection on dongles and the job that they do. It's not based on a strong background in IT, um, but Tim's asleep, so he he's not gonna- No, he's, he's not, not laughing. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> you didn't speak up when I said that you might be sleeping earlier. <laughs> oh, we have such a good time at these things. Um, okay, so we're going to look into that. We're going to um, see if uh, we can find a solution that will allow um, people to use their iPads um, for checkout when they are um, out in the community. And uh, hopefully we come up with something um, useful and good. And then we'll probably test it in Bonneville because that is where Tim and I live. And it's is pretty easy to just bust our way in. Yes. I, I could see the iPads also being really handy for the whole pick list thing. Because mm -hmm. no printing. If, if you can check, check on the iPad as you go. Yeah. yeah. That's what we do. It's the pick list processing function. And that was pretty much the only thing we ever used our iPad for, um, especially now that I'm not able to do outreach. Um, yeah. But yeah, we, we you pretty much use it daily for that specific purpose because we can just pack it around in the stacks with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a tidy, it's a tidy way of doing things. Um, the other thing that we used to use iPads for when I was um, in, uh, in Regina was uh, we, we would frequently wander around and we would do demos of our e-resources just to try to like push the numbers up. Um, be like, hey, did you know that I see you're reading a paper magazine? Did you know you could read this at home? And then, yeah, so we sometimes we were pushy and we went and made people learn things. Um, okay, so uh, we have uh, 10 minutes left, which means that I can answer questions and I can also show you guys what um, it looks like to uh, do different things that I said we can do. So um, I one mm -hmm. more interruption. Betty Lou clarified, and maybe this came up, but um, the pick list processing and request manager, the difference is pick list is the holds you need to pull from your own mm -hmm. library and mm -hmm. request managers holds placed to pick up at your library. Ah, thank you. That makes perfect sense. Um, okay, so I will share my screen and we will scoot around Polaris for the last few minutes of this presentation. All right. Okay, so you guys can see that I am logged in here. Um, the thing that I was talking about is when you are um, when you are using Leap primarily for customer service, you can go in and you can look at your printer options. Um, so you can select uh, what comes up when you are printing items uh, when you're checking in, when you're printing items, when you're handling ILL, when you are checking out, when you are placing hold requests. Um, so, you know, in theory, if you're placing a hold for somebody's account, you could print a receipt for that. Um, you can print uh, fine receipts. You can print um, patron status. Uh, receipts for things that they have checked out or their fines or they're in transits. Um, you can print pretty much anything. Most of the time you only really want checkout receipts. Um, most of the time it's just uh, checkout. Um, you frequently want hold receipts, um, but you might decide that you also want fine receipts too. So if, um, if a customer is returning something very late, uh, you might decide that you want to print a fine receipt alongside of your check-in. So you can go in here and you can basically play around until you have your settings the way that you want them um, so that you're getting the information you need and not more or less. 
Um, what else did I want to show you guys? This is holds Q. No, nope, that's not what I wanted to show. Um, so there's one thing that you guys can do from Leap uh, that is important to know, and it didn't fit too, I guess I could have talked about it during holds. Um, so when you put an item on hold, um, there's something that you can do uh, with the holds queue in order to bump your patron up in line. Uh, you wouldn't always do this. Um, you would do this usually if something has happened, uh, maybe like the item that originally came in uh, was damaged and they couldn't check it out. So you'd bump them up, and you'd put the hold in again and you'd bump them up to the top of the line so that they would get the next available copy. Um, but that is something that you guys may not be aware that you can do. And I will show you how you can do it. Um, so I'm going to go in as myself. So see how when I search, um, it basically just says, oh, this is a patron barcode. There's only one of them. So that's nice. Uh, and then I can go and place a hold for myself. <clears throat> Under holds, new hold. What is an example of a title that is going to have a whack load of holds on it right now? I just was looking at some um, and Indian, no, Indians on Vacation has oh, some. It, Indians on Vacation? I think they have some holds on there. Just, just looking at a bunch. All right, so there are two holds on that yeah. one. So I will open that. I will place a hold for myself. And then what I can do is, oh, I've also placed a hold, yeah, nobody has that one. So you can go to links and holds queue. And I am third, but I can actually move myself up if I want. Don't bump Trudy. Never, not our Trudy. Um, no, I, and, and you wouldn't do that. It would be unethical to just do that because you wanted it. Um, uh, it would be unethical. And I don't, I, I would say definitely, please don't, don't do that. Um, but sometimes there's a reason, right? Like um, maybe it's a DVD and the one that came in was badly scratched and won't play. So you might place the hold again and then bump them up so that they get it soon. Um, that makes for a much better customer service experience than, um, hey, I got this item. I can't use this item be through no, no fault of my own. And I guess now I'm going to wait another 12 weeks. Um, so there, there are good reasons to do it. Um, but then there's also crummy reasons to do it. And I don't recommend doing it for the crummy reasons. So I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to show you how um, you can cancel a hold. So um, that is no longer on hold for myself, but it will remain in my holds list in spite of the fact that I canceled it. So something else that you can do is you can reactivate it or you can delete it. So I'm going to delete that now because I am not currently wishing to borrow that book. Um, you will see I also have some holds in here for Northern Lights puppets uh, in general and also specifically for the moose. Um, something that will be coming out very soon is you will be able to search and place holds on all of our puppets and as will the public. So um, stay tuned because that'll be neat. It's a new thing. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to see? Um, this is me closing, not just exiting. Um, is there anything else that you guys want to see before we call this webinar at an end? You guys are so quiet and docile today. Nobody's spitting, spitting fireballs or sass. Well, I do have a couple of people who've messaged me that they were unable to log in. So maybe okay. that's why. All right. But I'm on it with, um, yes, I'm on it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you. 
Um, if you guys do, uh, you know, wake up at 3 a.m. and you realize that there was something you had wanted to see um, or something that uh, still doesn't jive for you, please uh, do feel free to reach out and I will happily answer your questions or seek further information and answer them after a brief pause. Um, but otherwise, we've done what we planned to do, I hope. Did uh, everybody get something or... Yeah, I'm going to say something out of this today. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Um, thank you everybody for everybody for coming out and uh, spending this time with me. This is part two of our 10 part webinar series. There will be one of these webinars every Thursday at one o'clock for the next eight weeks now, with the exception of November 11th, which is a holiday. Many of you have messaged me and let me know that I misscheduled that. I will be rescheduling the service planning uh, seminar. In Saskatchewan, we usually only take a half day. I don't know why it's different, but now I know, and I will, uh, I will stick with the program here in Alberta now. Thanks, Jesse. My pleasure. Thank you all for coming. Everybody, oh, I've already done that. Okay, everybody have a great day. Yeah, Jesse, where are the recordings on our library manager page? They are going to be on YouTube, but not published, but you'll be able to find them there. And uh, then also, uh, I'm going to be um, putting them on the, the, the library manager page. I just need to edit okay. out some of the nonsense. <laughs> just like just a little bit of it. Yeah, I can't just edit the whole okay. thing. My face isn't in here or any of my words. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great. So, if we day. if we oh. swear, you'll edit it out. Yes. Yeah, I will edit out okay. all of the swear words, just like last week. Good. Okay. okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. Take care, everybody. See you.